We have this just in. Philippine shares opening lower, uh, down by about a third of 1%, 19 points. We're now at 70.26. Another news. The Banco Central projects net FDI or foreign direct investments to fall further to just $6 billion for the full year of 2020, a steady decline from the record $10.3 billion back in 2017. This morning, we'll look at British investments with British Chamber of Commerce head Chris Nelson joining us live from Portugal. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning to you and good morning to all your viewers. Okay, so Chris, we're getting fourth quarter and full year 2020 GDP numbers this week. It's this Thursday, but that's hindsight. What are you seeing ahead for this year, 2021? I mean, the IMF is expecting a slow, long, uneven, and highly uncertain recovery. Are you taking a more bullish stance on the Philippines or are you more of the same? I think we always take a more bullish stance. We've always been very optimistic. I think on the Philippines, uh, I think the consensus by a lot of people is the growth rate. And I think the government is looking at between six and a half to seven percent. If you go back over time, six percent was the trend rate of the Philippines. However, I'd say that the key to that, of course, is government spending. Uh, and particular, of course, build, build, ramping that up, keeping that strong through and giving support also because <clears throat> let's not forget the Philippine economy is very much driven or is largely staffed by small to medium sized enterprises. Mm. So that government spending and that overall boost to the economy is very important. So optimistic. But obviously linking, let's get keep on seeing that bill, bill, bill coming through. Mm -hmm. Chris, you know, I'm very curious what goes on in your conversations uh, when you talk to the other heads of British chambers from other countries like like Vietnam or Hong Kong or Thailand. How, how's the conversation like? Well, look, first of all, we have a very close working relationship. It's actually called the British Chambers of Commerce in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. We work together as a group. We share ideas. Uh, of course, there has been recent trade agreements signed in Vietnam and also Singapore, which is a sign, of course, of the uh, post-Brexit uh, activity. I think our Secretary of Trade, uh, Liz Truss, was there. And, <clears throat> of course, what we work with our fellow chambers is also on companies. Uh, if a company is doing business in one of those, can also do business in the Philippines. So the cooperation between the various chambers is extremely high. And let's not forget all of us or most of us are in this partnership with the UK government, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the OPD, which is the Overseas Partner Delivery. And we work closely with the Department of International Trade to boost trade investment between the countries, obviously in our case, focusing on the UK and the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Chris, I know that you collaborate with the other uh, British chambers in the region, but I imagine you also compete because a company that's doing business uh, that's looking to do business in Southeast Asia would have to choose. Am I going to do it first in Vietnam or in the Philippines? Do you feel that the Philippines is getting enough attention or not so much? Like I think it's one of our roles and it's a very good point. Yes, we need to constantly bring up the Philippines. We need to constantly flag. And I, I draw a couple of points here. The first is we work very closely with the Philippine Embassy in London, led by Ambassador Lag de Mayo, and of course the Trade and Investment Group there, which is Michel Sanchez. We work closely with the British Chamber of Commerce and all chambers in the UK to promote opportunities. The other thing I just want to bring up, of course, is our constant pushing for change on economic liberalization. For example, the Retail Liberalization Trade Act, the Public Service Act. I think this is an important time for the Philippines to keep opening up its economy. And we can flag that back and get people to come and do business. The other thing which attracts companies to the Philippines, and let me stress that point, is also the talent. I mean, the Philippines has obviously got extremely talented people. It's got a great workforce. And it's also a great opportunity also because obviously the population 110 for our excellent UK brands. And obviously we're focusing heavily on food mm -hmm. and retail. So, yes, it is a competition. I would agree with you. We're trying our hardest working in partnership, obviously, with the UK and the Philippines. But also if we can get movements on economic liberalization, 
that would be a great help for us to flag back in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get to uh, the economic liberalization aspect later, uh, but let's talk about um, you know British companies, and you've got about over 300 of them in your group now here in the Philippines. Uh, you don't you don't only have to navigate through the pandemic, but through the Brexit as well. I mean, we're hearing news, seeing headlines of you know seafood left to rot at ports as exporters couldn't get them into EU. Logistical firms really just unsure how importing and exporting will work. They're seeing a lot of major disruptions. Do those disruptions in Europe threaten to take the focus off or, or even, you know, threaten to stop operations in some of their other territories uh, in ASEAN like the Philippines? No, it won't. I mean, look, uh, let me make a few points first of all. First of all, we have over 300 members. By the way, we're open to both British and non-British companies. Mm -hmm. One of the key strengths of the British Chamber is its networking. The second, actually, on Brexit itself, yes, I mean, it's very, very difficult for a lot of companies, but that doesn't affect doing business in the Philippines. And in fact, what we're trying to push to companies is the great opportunities that the Philippines offers and linking it to your other questions, that the Philippines can be a gateway to Southeast Asia. Hmm. So while we appreciate and we sympathize with the difficulties companies are having with Brexit and obviously those challenges that are coming up, we actually look at it as an opportunity to reinforce that they can be doing business in Southeast Asia and please select and obviously come to the Philippines and we can be using that for the market here and going forward. Mm -hmm. So we see it actually uh, looking at that as an opportunity. Chris, I'm just going to ask you uh, point blank. Are there British companies looking to set up shop here in the Philippines this year? Look, I'd say uh, that's probably going to be quite difficult. I mean, I want to be very direct. Uh, I think what we have done actually is work very hard uh, despite the pandemic. And obviously, you have to appreciate that companies are various lockdowns. The UK is mm -hmm. effectively in a lockdown now. Uh, and therefore, obviously, it can affect how you can contact people because people are obviously not always to work mm -hmm. from home. However, during 2020, we were successful in getting brands to be introduced to partners in the UK, uh, sorry, in the Philippines, such as, of course, in terms of uh, food and drink, in terms of obviously on construction, engineering, in the automotive business. So I don't want to say it's not hard work. It's extremely mm -hmm. hard work. But I think the key, and that's what we have to stress here, is the longer term. Mm -hmm. Yes, the pandemic is a great short term and it's created disruption across the world. But let's not forget the Philippines has got great potential and that is the story. Plus, historically, it grows at 6%. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to go back uh, very quickly. The UK has already signed bilateral trade deals with, SG, with Singapore and Vietnam already in effect by January 1st. Any word on when the Philippines might get that deal? No, no word. But I would say that, first of all, the Philippines remains a very key economic partner for mm -hmm. the UK. Uh, they work closely together. Uh, the Board of Investment Make It Happen campaign was strongly supported by the UK. Mm -hmm. And of course, the existing agreement from which the Philippines trades with the UK, which is GSP Plus, mm -hmm. has rolled over because of Brexit. So I see strengthening ties, but I can't give you any clear direction on when there'll be a new bilateral agreement, but obviously continuing and close cooperation. Uh, Chris, I know that you're pushing for two sectors in particular here in the Philippines. Manufacturing, because you've got the Made in the Philippines manufacturing uh, sector-specific uh, webinar, and one on the renewable energy sector. Why the focus on these two industries? Well, I think in terms of, um, you know, manufacturing, obviously, it's been a key strength for the UK. There's key expertise. We also see opportunities here. and uh, We want to highlight that in terms of the energy sector. We know the Philippines is focused on that. We also work because that's one of the key sectors for our colleagues at the Department of International Trade. I just want to emphasize we work closely with, obviously, the British Embassy. And clearly, there's a great interest in renewable energy. Uh, and again, if I link it all back together, I mean, obviously, we see growth rates coming back up. Therefore, we see obviously the need for energy. And obviously, there is a focus for new energy. And obviously, we see the need for manufacturing. The UK has great expertise. So 
what we're trying to do with these webinars, Michelle, is constantly highlight the opportunities and look for those longer term. And that's mm. that's how we position the Philippines for those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got a very busy first quarter this year. Um, for those who are interested, what are your other activities? Are there perhaps well, others? Look, actually, <clears throat> Yeah, so for this Friday, actually, we're going to have an economic outlook. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to be graced by our ambassador, uh, Danny Proust. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward also to getting, uh, it's going to be a presentation, obviously, from the Board of Investments. I think it's under Secretary Rodolfo. And I think, again, what we've got a lot of is a lot of webinars. I mean, obviously, uh, unfortunately, we can't do any physical events at the moment, mm -hmm. like everybody else. But we've been very active. Last year, we did 100 webinars, 4,500 uh, attendees. Attendees, and we intend to exceed that. We have a jam packed. And what we're trying to do is, as I said, coming back to our 300 members, we have a great networking. And we're constantly highlighting and trying to seek out opportunities both ways, the UK into the Philippines. So, a very active time. And I would encourage and welcome anybody who'd like to join us this Friday. Mm -hmm. uh Here's the thing, you earlier mentioned economic liberalization. Your investors might be happy to know that there's a renewed push for Congress uh, for constitutional amendments that will ease foreign ownership restrictions. Do you think this is going to be a game changer for British businesses here? I mean, how significant do you expect the impact will be? Look, I think it'll be very significant. Uh, I mean, you also have to see that when we go to, I think, particularly for two points, I think number one at this moment, and you've mentioned it yourself, Michelle, there is competition in Southeast Asia. And I think it's excellent that there is now a focus for that economic liberalization. I think it's something we can highlight. And linking to that is how we go back to the UK. We are uh, trying to show and say to people, look, the Philippines is a great place to do business, great people to work with. And now they're moving also on economic liberalization. The Retail Trade Liberalization Act is a key focus for us. We think this will bring in UK companies. We also think the Public Services Act will be a great change. So we warmly welcome it and we do see it as a game changer. Okay, and finally, uh, on COVID-19, the UK is behind one of the COVID vaccines, AstraZeneca. Is the chamber actively helping the Philippine government negotiate for those vaccines? And what's the game plan of UK companies here in the Philippines when it comes to, you know, rolling out the vaccination program for their employees here in Manila? Well, look, first of all, I don't want to take any credit for the tripartite. I mean, let me be very fair there. First of all, that was AstraZeneca, who was one of our key partners, mm -hmm. run by Lotus Ramen. And they actually work with that vaccine with the Oxford University, and it's a non-profit basis. One of the other key drivers, of course, is Secretary Galvez for that, mm -hmm. and our ambassador, Danny Proust. But in particular, I'd like to thank and note Goni Gosho, Jerry Conception, who we work closely with on Project uh, ARC and also now a dose of hope. What we work, and we have close cooperation with AstraZeneca, is facilitating information and trying to see how we can develop. In terms of overall rollout, we obviously work and see what UK companies are doing. And I'd just like to highlight another point that was on your show, actually. I'd like to commend the Red Cross for their saliva test because mm -hmm. vaccines is a key part, but it's one aspect, Michelle. The other thing, of course, is working together, making testing quicker. Uh, and I'd just like to highlight, of course, the work of Senator Gordon. We work closely, of course, with Red Cross. So. UK companies are looking at it. I think you've got to look at different approaches. Multinationals, of course, will have to take considerations because they've also got to mm -hmm. coordinate that with their head office. Local companies are also interested for us, and we're obviously facilitating those contracts. But great to see AstraZeneca, and all credit to them and Oxford University, and of course to our ambassador, and, the, and mm -hmm. great to see that happening here in the Philippines. And we look forward to obviously further rollouts of other vaccines as well and the work of obviously joey conception okay on that note thank you very much chris for joining us today thank you very much michelle and have a great day to you and your viewers and all the best for 2021 all the best for 2021